of mine wants to get into van life and she asked me what are the top 10 things I need for van life? Well, I had to think about it for a while because that's a very good question. I'm going to tell you what I told her. Number one, a place to sleep. <sighs> no matter what else you do, you got to have a place to crash for the night. One of the biggest appeals of van life is that you don't have to pay for a hotel. You can just park, crawl into bed, and sleep. Also, from a logistical standpoint, the bed is the largest item in your van build. I mean, I'm having trouble even fitting this all in the shot here. So everything else you put in your van is going to be positioned around the bed. So you figure out the bed first, then everything else fits around it. If I was designing this van again today, honestly, I would do the bed completely differently. We designed this bed for two people. Now it's just me. Well, okay, me and the cat. So I would design a smaller bed so that I'd have more living space. But because the bed is the center of the entire build, I'll have to take the whole thing apart in order to change that. So it's working for now, and I'm just gonna keep it. Number two, a place for your stuff. Have you ever seen George Carlin's A Place for Your Stuff routine? If not, go watch it because it's true. You gotta have places to put your stuff. So it's good to put, you know, say, cabinets into your build like this. You can also use storage bins or just whatever creative ways you can think of to put your stuff places. Keep in mind, your van, your home, is going to suffer an earthquake every day as you drive down the road. So if you just have stuff tossed everywhere, it's gonna bounce around and around and then you won't be able to find anything when you get to where you're going. So. You gotta have a place to keep your stuff where it'll be safe, secure, and you're gonna know where it is. Number three, insulation. You may think you don't need insulation because you're not gonna be staying any place where it's cold. But the flip side of that is insulation also keeps the heat out when it's hot outside, as well as keeping the heat in. Also, I am in Southern Arizona, probably one of the warmest places you can be in the month of January when I'm recording this, and it still gets cold at night. I've seen nights in the 30s. I've even seen high 20s once. So uh, it still gets cold at times, and you're gonna need some kind of insulation to try and keep that heat in there. Also, there's the question of condensation, especially if you're using some kind of a propane heater. The insulation will help prevent condensation from forming and making everything inside your van all wet. So, insulation, gotta have it. Number four, a kitchen. I am not a good cook, but I still have to eat. And I can at least boil up some water for some pasta, or I can heat up something frozen or, or something. I can even make a sandwich but you have to have some way to prepare your food. I go super simple. I have this little butane stove, it's a single burner. It's what a lot of people in the van life have. And you know, I have my other ingredients in here, maybe a spice or two, nothing too fancy, but in you know, my food in here, I've got my utensils and dishes and cast iron down below, but you gotta have a kitchen because you gotta eat. Number five, cold food storage. I went all out on this one with an Alpacool refrigerator freezer because I was already gonna have a robust electrical system. I wanted a refrigerator and I also wanted a freezer because I like ice cream. Blame Van City Van Life for getting me hooked on that. But you don't have to do that. You don't even have to have a powered refrigerator. A simple, good quality cooler will keep your food cold for you. That way you can go to the grocery store and you know you don't have to go every single day for what you're going to eat just that day. You can at least carry enough for a few days with a good quality cooler. Just keep putting ice in it. That's what I did in my first van and it worked just fine for me. So if you're on a budget or you just want to keep it simple, just get a good cooler. You'll be set. Number six, electricity. I am a full-on digital nomad, so having a robust electrical system was a top priority for me because I need it to make my living. I need to have my laptop running, I need to be able to get my internet, all that good stuff. 
Also, because I've been a ham radio operator for many years, I was already familiar with most of the concepts and what I needed to do to build a good 12 volt electrical system. I had to learn a little bit more about solar, but uh, I did it. That's not the only solution. I'm probably the only UN lifer on YouTube who is not sponsored by Jackery, but even I have a Jackery 240. It's handy for running things outside of the van. And in my first van, this was my entire electrical system. I was able to run my laptop off it. Now I ran all of my lights, chargers, everything. I'd recharge it from a simple 100 watt solar panel or I'd plug it into the van as I drove. And for those simple needs, it was just fine. If your needs are simple, something like this or Wetty or any number of other types out there will work. But if you're a total nerd like me, something like this works too. Number seven, the bathroom. Why yes, I am sitting on the can while I'm talking to you because welcome to van life. Trisha had insisted on the full blow nature's head composting toilet. It's very expensive. It's also very, very good. And she did use and maintain it quite well during our van life together. My needs are a lot simpler. In my first van, I just had the five gallon bucket with a little seat and lid that goes on top garbage bag inside, and because I'm a guy, I had a bottle for, you know, number one. Now that I'm on my own, this nature's head toilet well, is pretty much just a glorified pee bottle. But you do need some way to collect your waste because let's face it, sometime it's gonna be the middle of the night, you're gonna wake up and you're gonna have to do your business. So you gotta be prepared for that. Number eight, the internet. Like I said, I am a hardcore digital nomad, so I need reliable internet access in order to do my job. You can get by with a simple hotspot on your phone or your phone itself, or you can have an elaborate system of multiple hotspots and a mobile router like I do. I'll get more into how to do this in future videos, but just keep in mind the internet should be on your list. Even if you're not a digital nomad, it's great for looking up where you can find free camping and other places that are useful to people like us. Number nine, ventilation. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit like this. I've had the fan off for this video because of the noise, but it's hot outside, so this feels really good. Anyway, you need to have some kind of ventilation inside your van. It can be just your windows, especially if you have windows that open front and rear, and even better if you have screens to keep the insects out but you're gonna need at least a fan to keep the air moving when there is no wind, which is going to happen sometimes. And a lot of the serious vans you see do have something like this Max Air fan. It blows air in, it sucks air out. She's gone from suck to blow. What? And there's even an automatic mode that's temperature sensitive that will turn on and off the fan automatically and adjust the speed based on temperature. If you have a pet, like my cat, that's an absolute must have. My experience through one, almost one full year of van life is that the temperature inside the van never gets significantly warmer than outside the van. So all of those problems you see about pets left in vehicles overheating, not an issue with me. Number 10, good tires. This is literally where the rubber meets the road. And this is your house, so you wanna make sure it's safe. You wanna make sure you got good tread tires if you're going to do any dirt driving at all even dirt roads you probably want to consider a good all-terrain or highway terrain tire that can handle a bit of dirt but regardless you want to make sure you got good thick tread and that the tires aren't too old or dry rotted and of course you need a cap at least he says so anyway that's my list of the top 10 things you need for van life what do you think? Did I miss anything? Would you do something differently? Leave a comment, let me know, and let's have a discussion. Until next time, see you later.